Hello, this is Professor Hildebrandt here with some more examples on the counting methods that were introduced in Chapter 5 on probability. So first, I'm going to start with our multiplication formula. And this is where we're just trying to figure out how many total possibilities there are between um, different options. And so we say, look, if there are m ways of doing something and n ways of doing something else, like the example in class I gave was um, the style of a car and then the types of wheels on the car, how many total different um, combinations of cars are possible, okay, uh, is what we're saying here with the counting formula. So let's say that we were looking at how many different outfits we could coordinate, okay? And we have in our closet uh, sweaters in five different colors. So there's five colors of sweaters and we have four colors of slacks. And so again, it's just M times N. And so in this case, it's five times four or 20 different combinations um, of outfits could be put together, okay? Uh, look at a different example. Let's suppose we have a restaurant and we're trying to see how many different meal combinations, so meal combos, that we could have um, using, well, there are four different appetizers that people can select from. There are eight entrees and there are three desserts. And so again, it's just four times eight times three, or we have 96 different combinations of meals um, that could be put together given those options. So that is the multiplication formula. So next I'm gonna move on to permutation formula. And the key to this one is that the order matters. So if I'm looking at who gets first, second, and third, and I tell you it's Sue, Dan, and Jane, that's different from saying it's Jane, Sue, and Dan. So these are two different results, right? These are different results, so order matters. Um, and when we're using, uh, when we're trying to apply to a situation where order matters, then that's when we're going to use the permutation formula. And let me just show you really quick what it looks like. And then we'll go through what a factorial is, and then we will look at um, a couple of examples. So our formula for this one, for the permutation, we have n number of objects available. We're selecting r number of objects each time. And so it's n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And so some of you at this point are like, what the heck is she saying when she says factorial? So what does that n exclamation point mean? Well, suppose we had, this is our problem. We have 40 factorial, divided by 35 factorial. So you take the number, and it's every number one less than that until you get to one, and you're multiplying. So it's 40 times 39 times 38 times 37 times 36 times 35. Yes, I'm about to run out of space here. Times 34, dot, dot, dot. It would just keep going. But then since we're dividing by a factorial, we would start the same process. 35 times 34. Oh, wait, look at this magic that could happen right now. We know that when we're dividing, we can start reducing things. So the 35 would reduce with this one and the 34 with this one here. And guess what? All the dot dots on top, all the way down to one, those are all going to cancel out. And so we end up with an answer here of 78,960,960. So that's how we do a factorial, okay? So maybe I say, okay, there's seven objects and we want to select four. So again, n factorial is our seven, and then n minus r factorial. 
So we end up with seven factorial divided by seven minus four is three, so three factorial. So seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Yes, I did write this one out. And then the bottom is just three times two times one. So again, everything here would cancel out with everything in our denominator, and we would end up with 840 possibilities. Well, let's actually apply one and make it make a little more sense. So we have six people in a contest. So my N will be six. And we are looking for first and second place. And we wanna know how many different possibilities there are. So my R is two, I'm looking for the top two. Again, I'm gonna use the permutation formula because order matters. Saying John was in first and Sue is in second is different from saying Sue is in first and John is in second. So permutation formula at work. Again, my N is six, my R is two. So six factorial divided by six minus two factorial is six factorial divided by four factorial or six times five times four times three times two times one divided by four times three times two times one. We do some canceling out here of all of this and all of this, and we have an answer of 30. There are 30 different combinations from those six people that could end up in first or second in our contest. So that is the permutation formula. My last one is called the combination formula. It's very similar to our permutation formula except for now my order does not matter. If I'm trying to pick a committee of three colleagues to work together on a new proposal, saying that the committee is comprised of Sue, Dan, and Jane is the same thing as saying the committee is compri comprised of Jane, Sue, and Dan. My formula this time, again, it'll be similar. So we'll have, we'll have a big C here. Our N and our R equals N factorial divided by R factorial times the difference in N and R also factorialed. And so here we go. How many pairs can be made from a group of six? So once again, I'm looking at a grouping. I said six, I wrote seven, sorry y'all. Of six people. So my N is once again six, and I want to see how many pairs can be made. So my R is once again two. But now that I'm using the combination formula where order doesn't matter, I will not get as many outcomes as I got in the previous example, even though my N was six and my R was two when I was using the permutation formula. Let me show you. So we have again six and two. So six factorial divided by two factorial times the difference of six and two, also factorial, is six factorial divided by two factorial times four. Okay, so my numerator is six times five times four times three times two times one. My denominator is two times one and then times four times three times two times one. So once I start reducing here, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, I'm left with six times five or 30 divided by two times one, which is two, and so now there are only 15 possible pair combinations from those, that group of six. I hope this helps.